Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of JBS Garage, and today, very easy, very quick one. How to do the valve clearances on a YBR125 cylinder head, right? Now, you can do this in the motorbike, so don't worry that mine's taken out, it's just because I have a whole engine and no motorbike to be seen with it. Um, and yeah, what you need to do, first things first, is get a 24mm spanner, ringer render would be better, I don't have one, but I've already cracked them off using an adjustable. Um, and yeah, you just want to take both of these caps off. Now that they're both off, you want to go to the other side of the engine, which will be this side here, and you want to remove these two caps here with a flathead screwdriver. They look just like that. The bigger the flathead, the better for this one, so I tend to use my big wide one, as that's what gets them off the easiest. Because so if you use a little one, they tend to strip. And what you want to do is you want to use a 17mm socket, uh, which I will find you now in my drawer of dreams. You want to find a 17mm, and a ratchet, just to build in my little rig up. And then using this, you want to turn it so that you can see the timing mark in the in there. I'm not sure where this is on my one, but yeah. Well, the piston's down there, so to make it easier for myself, I'm just gonna turn it to the top there center, then I'm gonna show you where it's supposed to be. So now, as you can see, my piston's at the top, but you guys won't be able to see that. All you'll be able to see is in there, and the timing mark lines up with the flywheel. See that mark there? There's two marks left of it. They're the ignition marks. The timing mark is the one on the right. So as soon as that's there, then you can get into the next step on the head. Sorry for the blur. You can get into the next step on the head, right? I know mine are separate, so I don't have to do that on the engine, but you guys will have to if it is on your bike. I can't stress that enough. It has to be at top dead centre. Because if it's not a top dead centre, these are going to be compressing, you're not going to get any accurate measurements, and this isn't going to work. Right, so now you've done that, what you want to do is, it's quite hard to access these in the bike kind of thing with your hands, so you just got to bear with me how easy it will look for me. It might be a bit more challenging for you, but it is possible because I've done it plenty of times before. Right, and the first thing you want to do, I'm going to start on the inlet side, as this is the easiest one to access in the bike. You just want to use an 8mm, yeah, and you want to crack this off, crack off this adjuster. I just need to use both hands because it's a little bit tight. So as soon as that adjuster's cracked off, I'll just undo the nut a little bit. And just to make it so I actually need to adjust my rubber clearance, I'll undo mine a bit. So look, you can see, that's tapping now. So if you're a top end tap, that's actually what is making the tap. Unless there's a tap inside the piston where it's worn out. And what I'll show you from this angle is, what you now need to do is you need to get the feeler gauge under and in that gap. And what you want to do is, look, you can see I can still move that. You want to tighten it up. Now, with you guys, you're going to want to be using two hands for this. I'm just using one to make it easy for me. And you want to do it up until you can just feel slight resistance on the feeler gauge. But it's not too tight, it's not too loose kind of thing. So you can see, that is sliding for me. But I can't lift this up or down, that's just where it is now. And then once it's in that place, you can see here, there's a square shape on top of the adjuster there. That needs to be held dead still we to tighten in this nut back up with the 8mm. But you can just twiddle it down with your fingers for a second, just to get the 8mm snug. And as soon as it's in place, I tend to use a set of, uh, set of adjustables, but if you've got a pair of pliers or a proper tool for it, use it. I don't, so then I'm just gonna use the 8mm here, and I'm probably gonna need my second hand in a minute. I'm just gonna keep a close eye on it, make sure it doesn't move, because you can do this without it moving. Um, and you wanna hold that square bit still, hold it still, I can't hold it still, but it's looking to do it itself for me. Um, you just want to tighten it up. I'm sorry about the focus in this video, guys, it's because I'm quite close. Alright, and now that should be... Well, it's not tight enough to run, but you guys know how tight to do it. I don't have any torque specs or anything, just don't do it too tight. And you can see that it can move, but it's not loose, you know? And once I remove it, you can kind of see I can only just move this up and down little tiny baby tap because what this does is when the engine warms up that expands and then it's the perfect gap whereas right now it's a little bit cold well it's very cold and yeah and then it's the exact same for the other side and it's, the sizes you want to use for this <coughs> is on the feeder gauge you want your inlet to be between 0.08 millimeters and and 0.12 millimeters or for your exhaust, you went between 0.10mm and 0.14mm. That's because that one gets a bit hotter so it expands a bit more. 
because as air comes through, through the inlet, inlet valve, it pulls it down, but the hot exhaust forms the exhaust up, so that one actually expands more, which is why they're a different size. So I'm just going to repeat that again on this side. So now because I can show you how to actually do it properly for this bit, you uh, hold it, crack it off with the 8 nail. I'm going to make it randomly very loose. Now you can see it moves a lot. Get the adjustable, open it a little bit. Feeler gauge, I've got mine set to 12 point, well, 0 point, 0 0.127, which is basically 0 0.12, perfect for the exhaust. That's going to go in there. I'm going to twiddle that up with my fingers. Got the square bit, get it to the right tension. Currently too tight, that's getting stuck. Now, I just want to quickly add, guys, sorry this video is so short and so uh, crap. If you want a better revised video of this, let me know in the comments below. That's perfect, and you're going to turn the 8 nail down. And I'm leaving it in there just to make sure. I'm just going to use the square end of the 8 nail, get this on the top. Make an angle. I'm going to hold it dead still. And I'll do this up. Now that's it, I'm going to finish off again to make sure it's fully torqued down. One, make sure this one's fully torqued down too, so we can do that mate again. And done. Four bill on to five valve adjustment. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this short, easy video. Valve adjustment is the easiest job to do on most motorcycles, honestly. Unless you have like hydraulic tappets or fucking dual overhead cams in some 450 or something, this is easy. If you have a Chinese 125 or a cheap 125, this is an easy peasy job. So, thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want to see any more content like this. And uh, see you in the next one. Peace.